Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to make a dumb appliance a little bit smarter with the help of Sonoff Basic. Hi, hey, welcome back. Uh, sorry about the intro. Sonoff Basic sounds like something you'd get for some kind of uh, rash you may have down below, but it isn't. Sonoff is a brand of Wi Fi smart switch, uh, which you can see. I'll put some links in the description below so you can see what they do. But Sonoff basically is a, a quite well trusted brand within the home automation industry, and they make a lot of uh, single switches, dual gang switches, switches with built in power management features, etc., etc. They do a lot of different. Uh, home automation helpful devices. So again, I'll put some links in there to the Amazon store so you can have a look at them. You can pick up these on various different websites such as kind of Gearbest, AliExpress, all the kind of usual Chinese manufacturers. Me personally, I prefer to get things from Amazon because it comes pretty quickly and I know it's guaranteed delivery, etc., etc. So I'll put some links for the Amazon below. Okay, so let's have a quick look on the box first of all. So this is the Sonoff Basic. The power supply, it will take anything from 90 to 250 volts AC. Uh, maximum current is 10 amps, and the maximum power is uh, 2,200 watts, and it says that's a resistive load. And if you know what that means, good, great, I don't, but it says 2,200 watts. I probably wouldn't trust it up to as much as that, even though they say it will. Um, realistically, I would say these particular switches are best off for controlling uh, lightish loads, things like light switches. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using a desk fan. I wouldn't be tempted to use it for things like a kettle or a toaster or other higher load appliances, purely because the max current is 10 amps and most of those devices in the kitchen are going to be sort of 15 or above. At least the breaker in your kitchen is probably going to set to 15 amps or 20 amps. So try and use it in a, a low uh, amperage or low wattage appliance and you should be absolutely fine. Now this is made of uh, ABS plastic, so it's pretty much uh, fire resistant. It uses Wi-Fi and it's a Wi-Fi uh, 2.4 gigahertz, so no 5 gigahertz on these, which is the same for a lot of these home automation appliances. And the color is white. <laughs> Not that that makes much difference. But I've already wired one of these up, uh, which is currently powering my studio light. Um, so I can remotely turn that light on and off so I don't have to uh, climb down behind the wires or the desks and the lights are on to turn them on off. So that is a pretty good usage of what these can do. Ideally you want to find it so that it makes your life easier. Now in, in my case with these studio lights I have to climb behind a desk or get a chair out, climb over the back of a desk, flick a switch to get them to turn on. At least now I can use voice control via my Google Home app and I can turn the lights on and off which I'll show you more about that later. But that's the kind of thing that these are designed to do, to make life a little bit easier, put them maybe somewhere where you can't reach a socket or a plug. But anyway, let's have a look and see what we get actually inside the packaging. So that is the, the switch itself. Now you get two covers for the uh, input and output side of the switch. You get a little pack of screws which attach those covers on. Now this is the switch itself, so on this side is the input, so you have a, a neutral and a live input on this side, and you have a neutral and a live output on this side, and the switch in the middle takes care of things. So inside there, there's an uh, electro-mechanical switch, so it gets a slight pulse from one side, it then switches the relay and then turns on your device. So that's basically how it works. Let's uh, take it apart a little bit further and see what else is going on inside this thing. Okay, so that's the, uh, the inside of the switch. So as you can see on the back, well you probably can because it's quite, uh, quite far out. There's the controller chip just there, the uh, ESP, and all sorts of switches and diodes, etc. And you can see there, you've got the, uh, the tracks, which look like they've been uh, over-soldered to allow them to, to take a, a little bit more voltage. I guess these were more designed originally for lower voltage areas like the US where you're looking at 120, uh, 110 or 120 volts. Um, so they've probably added another line of solder track along the top there to get up to the 240, 250 to suit the, uh, the European and UK market. So that's the back. And on this side here, so you've got your LED which is just there. So that flashes to tell you what's going on. Flashes green. Um, when it's connected or when it's on or off or when it's in connection mode, etc. 
So that there is the, the relay itself. And you've got some uh, resistors, capacitors, etc. there. So not a great deal to, uh, to, to talk about there. But what you have got on each end, as you can see, those green connections with the two screw connections. So you can just loosen off those screws and put your cables in. And yeah, looks pretty good. It's pretty sturdy. Not bad for $5 or £5 or whatever. So let's go back through to the, uh, the other side and we'll go through it in more detail. Right, okay, so we're back now. Uh, so we've got the switch back together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and make this dumb device, which is a old Honeywell fan, which has been lying around in the attic for ages, not being used. And I thought I'd try and make it a little bit smarter. So problem being, I'm at bed at night. I'm having trouble sleeping at the moment. Summer's coming, temperatures are getting hotter and in the nighttime, it's just really hot. And the last thing I want to do is get out of bed and turn the fan on. So a lot easier for me. I've got the phone charging by the side of my bed. I've also got a Google Home in my bedroom. So I can just say, hey Google, turn the fan on. And then that'll turn the fan on. Or I can set a timer within the app for the fan to come on for maybe half an hour or an hour just to cool me down so I can actually get some sleep. So I figured that's what I'm going to try and do. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing to do is to strip the cable. Now the cable, this particular fan has an earth as well as a live and a neutral. Now, before you sort of all start commenting and saying how bad an idea this is, I know how bad an idea this is, which is pretty much why I'm gonna do it, but it, I'm doing it because I wanna prove a point that I can, this is what you can do. You can make an appliance smarter by adding one of these devices. So, let's cut the cable to start with, making sure obviously it's unplugged. And the next thing we want to do is strip down all the wires and then reconnect the earth with a little connector block, which we'll do now. Okay, so that was the, uh, the hard part actually out of the way. Basically trimming down the cable, cutting it in half and putting the wires into the unit. The actual uh, connection for the wires is actually very small. So uh, you might need your glasses or a magnifying glass to get the cables in, but it's not too bad. Maybe it's just my eyesight is getting worse. So I don't know if you can see very well from there, but. So I've got the, the neutrals on both sides going into the block and I've got the lives as well. And as a bit of a uh, cowboy measure, the earth, I've rooted around the back and connected together with a chock block connector or chock connector, whatever you call them. So at least we've got a continual earth running through the circuit. Now I admit it's not the, uh, the nicest looking of jobs, but it will do the trick. Okay, so you've seen the wiring, put all that together. So now what we need to do is put the, uh, the string relief connections back on which is uh, relatively straightforward, just a matter of uh, tightening up two screws each end, just to tidy that up a little bit. And then we can go on and plug it in and I'll show you how to set up the uh, U-Link app to get these things working. So I'm gonna do these up a minute and we'll be back with the next bit shortly. Okay, so we've got it plugged in now, we've got the cable relief uh, or string relief bits on there, so that's all good. So you've still got our sketchy earth wire on the back, but it's all good, it's all working. So we plugged it into the socket and it didn't trip out the house, so that's another good sign. And I'm not sure if you can quite pick out, but the flashing LED by the Wi-Fi uh, indicator is now flashing. Okay, so the device is ready and we've pressed the button on the front to get it into pairing mode. And you see there's a flashing quick LEDs. So we're gonna go into the U-Link app. Now the U-Link app is what controls this device. I guess you could probably could use other apps uh, for your home automation, but this one seems to be what works the best for me and is the one they recommend. So first thing to do is to obviously set up an account with username, password, etc., and get the app set up. Once you've got it set up, then you can add a device. So click on the plus icon to add a device and it's asking if it's in quick pairing mode, which it is at the moment. And you can see the blinking on this there is the same as the blinking on there. So hit next. It will default to try and use the Wi-Fi that your phone is connected to, obviously because that's going to be the strongest one that is around you. So if you need to use a different Wi-Fi for the switch, make sure the phone and the switch are in the location where that router or Wi-Fi signal is. So we'll choose that as the default. So now it's going to carry on trying to do the pairing and synchronize the two devices. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long. Normally it takes about sort of three minutes at the tops, um, but sometimes it's going to be a lot quicker. So saying at the moment it's found a second generation device. So hopefully now it's transferring the data from the app to the ESP chip in the Sonoff. It says it's registering and there we go, it's all done. So 
best thing to do is name the device something memorable so you can control it with your voice at a later date. So I'm going to call it fan because it's connected to a fan. And there we go, success. So it's added the fan into my list of devices. So now I can press the button and it will turn the fan on. Press the button, turn the fan off. And also that can now be controlled. After synchronizing with Google Home, you can use your voice by saying the trigger word, hey Google, and then telling it to turn the fan off, or turn the fan on. Okay, so I've worked out now that DE recorder doesn't work at the same time as Google Home. So trying to test this without having my Google Home Mini next to me is not easy. So I've turned off the DE recorder and now I'm going to try and set this, make it, this work properly as it should do. Hey Google, sync my devices. Okay, syncing devices for smart life. Hi, I'm smart we link. So now all my devices should be updated. So hey Google, turn on the fan. Okay, turning on the fan. So that worked. Okay, Google. Turn off the fan. Turn off the fan. Sure, turning off the fan. <laughs> the microphone couldn't hear me because the wind was blowing past the mic. <sighs> These things are sent to try us. Anyway. That has been the long way round of showing you how to set up a Sonoff basic smart switch. Uh, again, you can use it with pretty much any device you want to, just take into account the amperage, the wattage, and the practicality of where you're gonna use it and how you're gonna use it. Anyway, I've been Mike, this is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and this has been the Sonoff basic, and we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.